So what you're looking at here, ladies and gentlemen, is the inside of a Zenoa two-stroke gas engine that's been modified for use in a model helicopter. I saw another guy's YouTube channel where he cut an engine in half and kind of demonstrated how it works. And it gave a very nice visual of what's going on inside this motor while it's running. So I kind of stole his idea and cut up a broken motor that I had so that I could show you guys what's going on inside one of these things. And I'm going to build one, a new one, the way that I like to build them and share a lot of stuff that for some reason people don't want to tell people or think are big secrets, but I'm going to share it with you guys and you know, everybody's opinion's different, and some people may not do it the way that I do it or like the way that I do it, and that's okay. You can build them however you want, but I'm going to build it the way I build it, and then we'll run it. We'll make some videos, and we'll see what it does, and we'll stick a tune pipe on it and see what it does. Go from there. So, anyway, this is what's happening when this little guy's running at about 14,000 RPM, 14,000 times a minute, this piston is going up and down. So at the top of this cylinder, where those threads are, up here, a spark plug would go in there and create a spark. So right about here, this would be called top dead center, TDC, and this is where all the gas and air is squished into this combustion chamber up here into this little area and sometime slightly before this piston gets here the spark lights off to ignite this and starts a burn so that once this piston passes just passes this top dead center point it starts to push down on it the combustion gases the expansion of the air from the heat causes this piston to get pushed down well, some pretty interesting things are happening in these little motors while that process is occurring. So, one of them is you have this period from the top down to here where you can contain these gases and cause this motor to create power. At a certain point, this hole over here, this port opens, that's the exhaust port, and that starts to let all those spent gases out to ready this whole area up here for a new charge, new fresh gas and air. So after this port has been open for a period of time, hopefully enough time to clean out most of the old exhaust gases that are in here under pressure, these little ports in the back start to open. Those are called transfer ports. And so what happens when those guys open is fresh air and fuel is being pushed from down here in the crankcase up into this cylinder to fill the charge. And at the same time, this exhaust port still open and that's allowing all the old spent gases to be pushed out by these fresh new gases and try to fill this cylinder as much as possible. So then as this motor is spinning around, the whole process starts over again and it starts to compress all of this air and fuel and something interesting is going on at the same time down in the bottom of this case is that as this piston goes up and it closes those ports, it starts to create a vacuum down here. There's a negative pressure and over here is your intake port and this is where your carburetor would be attached and all your fresh air and fuel is going to come in. So once this piston skirt passes the bottom of this intake port opening it allows this crankcase to start to fill with fresh air and fuel at the same time that it's compressing air and fuel up here and getting ready to make another bang boom intake ports wide open piston starts to come down and close it off again so that it's trapped in here and as it's trapped in here it's building pressure on the bottom that's called primary compression 
So this primary compression is being built so that once these transfers open up here on the top again, it's being forced from the crankcase up into the cylinder at some kind of pressure. And primary compression is important because we want that push to get all that fresh air and gas up into the top of this cylinder. So that's the basics of how a piston ported two-stroke motor works. What we'll do is we'll start with each system and we'll dig in and we'll modify them and I'll explain why I modify it the way that I do and how it affects the way the engine runs and all the trade-offs that I know of that uh, are caused by the modifications that I make. So hopefully you'll stick around. There's going to be a lot of videos and a lot of information to share and hopefully you guys that are smarter than I am with two strokes will chime in and Add your two cents to the discussion and maybe we can come up with a really cool motor to stick in a helicopter that's super powerful and smooth and sounds cool. See you in the next video.